experience to the Chicana experience. Again, I'm no authority, uh, but I've given you links and tons of citations if you're interested in doing more research on um, Chicano, Chicana theoretical perspectives. So let's talk about that. Chicana, Chicano uh, theoretical perspectives. Um, this is a quote from, where is this from, 36? This is a quote from uh, uh, Baka Zinn. Um, quote, and this is a great quote, right? With respect to the Chicano theoretical perspective, um, subordination has often been treated as a consequence of deficiencies inherent in Chicano value and lifestyles, right? So that when we talk about the subordination of an individual, right? Where's my blue marker? When we talk about the idea of subordination, right, we can think of we can think of subordination as being based on this inherent value. There's a problem within the person. It's something inherent about them that's bad. It's something inherent about them that requires us to subordinate them. There's a sense in which we can't extract that badness from them. And insofar as they have that badness in them, we have to keep them sort of encaged, right? We have to subordinate the population. Subordination has often been treated as a consequence of deficiencies inherent in Chicano values and lifestyles. Um, this relates to the notion of behavioral problems within communities. Thus, it requires a conservative behaviorist approach, right? If we're saying that um, this value, and we're going to say that this is something that's bad, equals a threat. If we say that this equals a threat, then what we need to do is we need to subordinate the population, the Chicano population, because of that threat. Right? We need to subordinate the population because of that threat. We can't trust these individuals because there's an inherent threat that they pose. Um, the way that we resolve this threat, right, the way that we address this threat to use West, is we go to the conservative behaviorist approach. Right? We go to the conservative behaviorist approach. Right? We try to motivate them. We try to change them. We try to encourage them to be more like us and less like themselves. Right? It becomes a self-denying process. In this structural hierarchical account of normative whiteness, Chicano, Black, and now Arabic men are at the bottom rung. Right? Those are the worst type of men that you can be. Right? No, no well-founded, knowledgeable white man would want to be me. Right? Being me is not a good thing. It's much harder to be me than it is to be who they are. It's much. It's even harder, probably, arguably, to be an illegal potential felon in Mexican. Individual, like even I would say, well, I don't want to be him. Uh, you know, being a Mexican guy, wow, that's the word. Or being an Arab, that's you know. So what ends up happening is you have this hierarchy in which people are pleased with the status that they have, but they would never, for all the money in the world, go to a lower rung, right? And there's no one that wants to be at that base. Who's at that base is contingent on your perspective. The black guy might be down there. The Mexican black guy might be down there. The Arabic guy might be down there. But there's going to be somebody at that lowest rung. Quote, structural discrimination is the underlying expl uh, uh, explanatory proposition in the emergent theories of what's known as um, internal colonialism. Right? So this is a very important concept. The idea is internal colonialism. And by internal, by internal we mean intra- Right? By internal, we mean intrastate, right? colonialism within the state. Obviously, when we talk about colonialism, we think a state's here, another state's here, and we subordinate uh, the people of some other state. When we're talking about internal colonialism, here's a state, and there is subordination of respective groups within the state. Right? So internal colonialism is the um, exactly what I said before is how colonialism unfolds, just intrastate within the state. That's, that's all internal colonialism means. Um, so Pablo uh, Gonzalez Casav um, Cas Casan Casanavo, uh, 
Casanova, 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 sorry. Pablo Gonzalez Casanova discusses the nature, I brutalized that, discusses the nature of internal colonialism and the domination of one race over another within one's country, right? And I gave you a citation to that if you want to do um, more research. Um, it's uh, an article entitled Internal Colonialism and Natu uh, National Development. So, good stuff. Chicano studies, the next point is that Chicano, stu Chicana, Chicano studies um, cannot assume a homogenized descriptive account of the Chicano experience, right? We can't say that uh, we can't say that here is a community, right, and here's the, here's the Chicano, Chicano community, and obviously the community is composed of many different individuals, right, and we can't then say that we're going to take an individual's experience within this community, let's say this person's, you can't take an individual experience of within the community and then classify right you can't then take one experience and classify a collective identity for the entire community you just can't do that right there's a logical uh, problem with that I'm not going to talk about that right now right? but you can't make a generalization of all based on an instantiation of a specific experience of one or even some, right? So in Chicana, Chicano um, studies, we have to recognize that the voice of the Chicana, Chicano ex um, experience is going to be contingent on their stories, right? What it is that they have to say about their experience with respect to oppression, with respect to um, their relation and understanding um, of hegemonized power, right? The next thing in relation to that is that micro level approach, right? This very specific approach. This would be, let me write that down. This would be the micro, M I C R O. And then this huge would be the macro, right? You can't take a micro level approach and make macro level generalizations, right? You can't do that. What you can do is take a collection of micro level approaches and talk about patterns, right? Or themes. But that's as good as it gets, right? Use grounded theory, and I've, I've done a discourse on what grounded theory is and how to appropriate grounded theory properly. You can use grounded theory to talk about themes within the community, and then you can code that information, but you can't take a particular phenomenological or existential experience of one person and use that experience to classify um, and collectively identify all the Chicano, Chicana experience. You just can't. Um, much of the complexity of Chicana history can be garnered from the Mexican corridos, right? So what I wanted to do is I wanted to very, very briefly um, introduce you, um, because I'm sure most of you haven't been introduced to the, the notion of the corridos. And in the corridos, it's a story. It's a story in verse, um, usually strung on a guitar um, or some stringed instrument. And it's a story of everyday people and their experiences in everyday life. Right? And it's the story of these individuals, right? specifically these uh, uh, Mexican laborers, impoverished soldiers, destitute housewives, people who are love-stricken, people who, who lived and experienced life that we recognize that we can find and identify themes. Now, I'm not going to read the whole um, corridos that I've attached. You can read that on your own. Um, the, the column to the left is the English translation. The column to the right is the Spanish original. Um, and basically, it's a story of a soldier who's about to be killed, um, and his horse comes to save him. His horse ends up dying in the effort to save him, and he mourns the loss of his beloved horse. Pretty mundane story, right? But there's so much that can be drawn from that story, and it's the value, the courage, the connection, the loyalty that this man had to his horse. Again, pretty mundane example. What you end up finding in Chicano, Chicano, studies is that um, the individual Mexican, the individual Mexican worker, the individual Mexican laborer has been demonized even within the, and this is where a lot of conflict arises, but I've read enough to know that this is true, even within the context of um, Hispanic, uh, Hispanic studies, right? So that even within the Hispanic community, there is a hierarchy of better and worse 
um, echelons of Hispanic community.